Hello, and welcome to episode 190 of the How to Survive podcast. If the food don't kill you, the service will. How about this for a wet dream? It's Joe Shervel. All right. <laughs> That's quite good. It's a quote from this week's film. Mm. Was uh, it, um, you could be the A-League hottie, was it? A-League stud? That's an example of the fine research that... Uh, I watched the movie three hours ago <laughs> and have forgotten all of it. This week's film is 1988's A Nightmare on Elm Street, The Dream Master, mm. directed by Rennie Harlan. Yeah, we love his work. Yeah, this Deep is, Blue uh, Sea. Third time on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, he's, he makes a certain type of film and this is one of them. If you haven't seen a nightmare on Elm Street, the Dream Master, you've had thirty-one years mm. in which to do that. Uh, so, if you care about spoilers, duck out now because we will be spoiling all of the film in our plot recap, uh, and then we'll be talking about what we did and didn't like about the film before we move on to our eponymous "How to Survive" chat. Yeah. Any final thoughts before we throw on to the plot recap, Joe? Um. Well. If you had to set the tone for this film, what would you say? I think I have already with Great. my reticence. <laughs> it's okay, here's the tone for the film. The Dream Master coming after this. Do you know what terror is? Hello. Do you live here? Nobody lives here. Real terror. How long has it been since you've been on Elm Street? Welcome to a brand new nightmare. He is the first in fear. Second to none. Don't let them put you to sleep. He has no mercy. And no evil. Now no one sleeps. Get ready. This August, your wildest dreams will come true. How sweet, fresh meat. A Nightmare on Elm Street, Part 4. The Dream Master. It's a year on from the Dream Warriors and Kristen, Kincaid and Joey have been released from Western Hills and are back with their families. We know and love them all. Yeah. Kristen, who still possesses her dream powers, you'll remember that from the Dream Warriors. Yeah. What dream powers are this? Uh, the ability to drag other people into her dreams. Right. Um, and sort of have more control over the dream world. Yeah. Kristen believes that Freddie... Patricia will... Arquette back again, is she? Uh, no. No, she's not. Oh. Recast. That's, that's fine. That's fine. When you recast your lead uh, for a sequel, yeah. always a sign of a high-caliber movie. Only a year on. <laughs> uh, Kristen believes that Freddie will one day return, but the others think the serial killer is gone for good. Uh, this is a conversation that takes place in a dream version of Freddy's Boiler Room. Uh, if there was ever a sign mm. that Kristen might be wrong, <laughs> it's that she's being made to dream about Freddy's Boiler Room. But the pipes are cold, so that's fine, yeah. The next day, Kristen meets up with her boyfriend Rick, a martial arts enthusiast, his sister Alice, and their friend Sheila, who is asthmatic, and Debbie, who hates bugs. Uh, but she is... As we've seen from her demeanour and the fact that she keeps saying it, she's a fitness enthusiast. Yeah. Um, and she meets up with them as well as Kincaid and Joey. Uh, that night, Kincaid dreams that he is in the junkyard where Freddy's body is buried and watches as a dog urinates fire over Freddy's grave, resurrecting him. <laughs> <laughs> Who didn't see that coming? He screams for Kristen to help him, but despite him putting up a good fight, he is killed by Freddy. 
Meanwhile, Joey falls asleep on his waterbed. This film is set in the 80s. <laughs> and Joey dreams that a beautiful model from a poster on his bedroom wall is swimming inside it. He is captivated until she becomes Freddy, who drags him underwater and kills him. Yeah. The next day... How's this for a wet dream? <laughs> how's this for a wet dream? The next day, Kristen tells her friends and school jock Dan all about Freddy and vows to get revenge. Mm. That night, Kristen realises that her mother has put sleeping pills in her dinner mm. and is confronted by Freddy <laughs> in a dream. Her mother learned nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. As she is the last of the Elm Street children left to kill, Freddy goads her into dragging Alice into her dream so that his fun can continue. Freddy burns Kristen in his boiler, but before she dies, Kristen gives her dream power over to Alice, mm -hmm. which is a thing. Yeah. Alice wakes up and rushes over to Kristen's house with Rick, but they are unable to save her, finding her room completely ablaze. Alice falls asleep during a class and inadvertently brings Sheila into her dream. Freddy kills Sheila and makes it look like an asthma attack. Rick begins to believe that Alice's, and by extension Kristen's, stories about Freddy are true, but he too is attacked and killed by Freddy. He uh, gets beaten, beaten up by an invisible Freddy. In karate. In karate. Mm. Why is Freddy invisible? Um, because you should... Alice begins to take on the characteristics of her, each of her dead friends. She uses words and phrases used by her friends and shows an aptitude for martial arts. She makes plans with Debbie and Dan to fight Freddy, but her grieving father asks her to stay in. She does and eventually falls asleep, allowing Freddy to use her to drag Debbie into the dream, transform her into a bug and kill her. Mm. He gets her stuck on uh, kind of like a fly trap. Yeah, it's, called a, it's called a roach motel. Yeah, you can check in if you can check out. Yep. While rushing to Debbie's aid, Alice tries to ram Freddy only to hit a tree, injuring Dan. You should say she's in a car. They're in a car, yeah. <laughs> Just try, shoulder charge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alice finds Dan in the dream and saves him from Freddy using her accumulated dream powers. Mm. Alice remembers a nursery rhyme about Freddy and forces him to face his own reflection, causing the souls within him to revolt, tearing him to pieces. The souls of his victims escape and he is left a husk. Mm. Thank you for saving us, Alice. Yes, exactly. It's amazing that you've got clips from the film just yeah. ready to go. Months later, Alice and Dan are on a date, breezily chatting to one another about how everything is fine and always will be when Alice sees Freddy's face in a reflection. Mm. Dun, dun, dun. In the, in the fountain. Yes. Uh, what do you think was, she wished for? Uh, I, I think she wished for an end to the Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> franchise. And she got it. This is the fourth of seven or nine Nightmare films, depending on how you... Uh, whether you count the Freddy remake Jason. and Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah. It was the highest grossing Nightmare on Elm Street movie until really? Freddy vs. Jason mm. uh, overtook it. What did you think of A Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master? Uh, it's better than the last one by a good stretch. Mm -hmm. The last one was abysmal. Um, although in retrospect, the only thing I remember about it was the fact that it had Patricia Arquette in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Freddy has become what he probably needed to be for the sequels okay. in this movie. Meaning? And that is a somewhat fun villain, all right? Right. In Nightmare on Elm Street 2, you recall, that had him controlling someone in the real world yeah. as a like, homosexual latent repressed desire, yeah. uh, which wasn't compelling, and it became completely illogical to the point of being basically unwatchable. Yeah. In Nightmare on Elm Street 3, The Dream Warriors, it was a little more about mental health, and, you know, we praised the fact that it was like, oh, he's taking advantage of their, um, you know, what might come up in a dream, the subconscious, perhaps. Yeah. But in that, I think his traps were more cruel than cartoony. Yeah. Uh, and I think I get the most enjoyment out of stupid stuff like 
turning someone who scared of bugs into a bug yeah or i i love how the opening maybe like 20 minutes of the film yeah. is like here is someone who likes martial arts right here is someone who, who has hate, trouble breathing right yeah here is someone who, who hates like bugs, bugs. Right. yeah it's yeah. like i wonder how freddie will use all of these things yeah <laughs> uh, if you compare the bug death with say the murder of the drug addict in nightmare on street 3 yeah where like her trail marks on her arm start like they, they like, become like mouths yeah it's really like it's upsetting yeah it's well done and it's scary but it's yeah. not fun in the way that this movie is yes right. um so i found it to be the most fun sequel yet yes uh it probably has the the respect or the reverence that freddie needs yeah um, which is that he is a fun villain not a cruel demon though he is yeah the, the, it would be it's, it's hard to articulate because he is sadistic he yeah. is cruel but there's a certain f- fun aspect that you could have with that which i think the early movies didn't have yes absolutely um i i agree with you in that i think it was quite a lot of fun um it Felt like it had all the building blocks of a good teen movie outside of the horror stuff. Oh yeah, um, um, it is shit. There's best be clear. <laughs> like, it's rubbish, right? But, yeah. yeah, but it's but there's rubbish and then there's like rubbish, right? And I think this is this is on the positive side of the yeah, scale. But Rennie Harlan clearly has a, a steady hand for making enjoyable trash yeah yeah the, i thought the teenagers were pretty likable and one thing that really struck stuck out to me was that they all like each other as well mm. because how many teen horror movies have we seen where the kids hate each other and then we end up hating them as well because they're yeah. just unpleasant to watch because they're just being mean to one another they're right. like you know they just make them like a lot of horror movies do this thing where they make all of the characters unpleasant so you're almost like rooting for them to die yeah whereas the better ones make you root for them to survive exactly right because then there's tension then there's like a you know you want them to survive the, the there's lines in this where say the the cool fit yeah leather girl uh is being mean to the book smart girl yeah but they they're meeting each other as equals and right. they go away smiling right yeah because the the book smart girl drives a motorbike I right think. yeah and the the like um fitness fanatic she, she's, she's just like she's not an archetype she's right like a, debbie, a debbie and debbie is the fitness fanatic and sheila is the the asthmatic yeah and debbie is like why are you riding that like death trap you yeah know, it's gonna make your asthma trash. worse oh yeah it's gonna make your asthma worse and she's like actually asthma is a genetic condition yeah. you'd know that if you ever read a book you idiot yeah and then they're like high-fiving and like a, a guy like not part of the group makes some sort of comment mm. and about one of them and the other one sticks up for them right and tells exactly. them to fuck yeah. off and stuff like that sort of thing is is sorely missing from a lot of horror movies that we watch and yeah. i think that really stuck out to me also the deaths are good in this yeah they are. and they're as we said they're all foreshadowed which is it which you know although it's obvious it, yeah. it makes it satisfying and it pays off in a nice way yeah um they're all grisly and they're all sort of creative and i think the ones that really stick out are joey who gets drowned in his his water bed right and then his body turns up inside the water bed which is like absurd uh sheila who gets uh kissed by freddy and like sucked Sucked dry dry. yeah yeah, yeah. um like doesn't he say like you want to suck face or whatever like some shit like it's horrible yeah and then uh debbie who is chest doing chest presses right and Freddie like forces her arms down into her elbows like, break, <laughs> and then, and then out of like the wounds, Bugs cockroach legs, legs yeah, sprout and stuff. Me. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and she turns into like a human cockroach, and then he cro- like. And the other thing about that is that the really the intro to that scene is that um, Alice goes to a cinema. No, that's not. That's well, okay, so this is how the th- whole thing. Right, Alice wants to go out to fight Freddy, and her father, who has lost his son, yeah. is like, "Please don't go out." So she's like, "Oh, all right then." Yeah. And then she falls asleep. Yeah. She in her dream goes, goes to a cinema to watch Reefer Madness. Right. Yeah. And then on the screen is a diner where an elderly version of Alice 
is still working there, yeah. which is like her nightmare, her nightmare, right? Because yeah. she doesn't want to stay in this dead end town or whatever. Yeah. And then through that, I think she like looks back yeah. through. She gets the... sucked into the screen, right? Yeah, which is yeah. a good, good shot. A good yeah, shot, no, yeah. that whole start, all of that is is really cool. Mm. And the people who were in the audience in the cinema turn into the victims. Yes, and then and then she. Uh, it ends up going to Debbie and then Debbie like so it's this whole like truncated mm. thing but it's quite it's quite well done I thought yeah um and yeah so she she ends up she ends up being killed the other thing with that scene that I thought was like genuinely like really good and it's almost like an inception level of of like clever intelligent uh filmmaking is the the deja vu thing Right. Yeah. So that's good. Alice yeah. and Dan run to their car to drive off to save yeah. Debbie, and the the scene plays, I think, yeah. three or four times before right. the, the first time. Did you think it was an editing issue? I thought it was a streaming issue, right? Because we watched this on Amazon Prime or, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, I thought it was a streaming issue. I thought my stream was fucked up, and yeah. I was like, "Oh, that's annoying," but. Then it happens again, yeah. and, it, and then it happens again after that. But and you're it's like, cut differently, and you're like, yeah. okay, right. And I then know. eventually Alice is like, this feels, yeah. something about this is wrong. Mm. It's really well done. That's a really clever, interesting yeah. way of, and like, it makes sense. Like, if they're in a dream, but they can also fight, you know, they can fight back, they can control the dream. It makes sense that Freddy would have some sort of power where he's just like trying to delay them. Yeah. Like that makes a ton of sense, which in the same way as Inception, where they create like looping staircases, the point is that when you're in a dream, your brain doesn't really question these things. Yeah, right. So you can just get trapped in a loop. Yeah, which mm. is exactly what happens to them. So I thought that was that was like genuinely one of the like most ingenious parts of all of the films in the franchise so far. I agree with you. It was very cool. It was, there were a lot of good sequences. It's like the the, the set pieces are all very well done. Yeah. I think the glue that holds them together is probably just pretty trite. Yeah. Like I, sure I, I, the, th- the three who carried over from the last film, uh, Kristen, Joey and Kincaid, they are like, I, I, they're just there to, yeah, I don't care. No. Right. No one does. Well, that sort of ties into, they're trying to build this whole mythology, right? Around Elm Street and around Freddy Krueger. But really it's just nonsense, isn't it? Because one of the things that keeps cropping up in these films is the original Elm Street house that Nancy right. lives in. Yeah. Which, they keep going back there. It's like, oh, we moved into it or it, we drove past it. Oh, it's yeah. Weird house. yeah. And, and it's, it becomes this like huge supernatural location where originally it was just a house. It's just a house where someone lived. And that's what made it scary, right? Because it's more scary to think that this could happen to anyone anywhere than yeah. it is to think that this location has some sort of significance. significance yeah, right? it's, it's far less compelling to be like, oh, this will only happen to you if you live on Elm Street. Right. I understand so, yeah. it's called cool a nightmare on Elm Street, but often in these movies, they, they did it in um, Friday, Friday the 13th as well, where yeah. they're like, oh, we wanted to show that this could happen to anyone. And then the, the final twist is like, oh, it was Jason Voorhees' like, original victim's cousin. And yeah, like, exactly. Who gives a fuck, yeah. right? It but couldn't then, happen to anyone. But then... Obviously, we have the dog pissing fire to bring Freddy back to life. What are you worried about? That's what fine. like what is what is that? What is that? It's fine. That's fine. Um, I, I see that and raise you to um, the nursery rhyme. Yeah, it's- I I think this is this is where I thought this like this is where the film took a giant misstep in my opinion. Yeah. What, so the, what's the line? So. Uh, Alice, two, Alice is fighting Freddy yeah. in the church and, and she this, says, it's just apropos of nothing, she's like, wait, this nursery rhyme mm. uh, that I remember from a, being a kid. It's the it's one, two, Freddy's coming for you. No, it's no? not. Okay. Right? I've got it here. Right. The, so she says, because that's the, that's the one that's always been in the film, right? The, is, is one, two, Freddy's coming for you, three, yeah. four, better lock your door. Or right. sometimes as I lay me down to sleep, which is the prayer. Right, so the 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 nursery rhyme mm. is now I lay me down to sleep. The master of dreams, my soul I'll keep in the reflection of my mind's eye. Evil will see itself, and evil will die. Man, that's a that is not a kid's nursery rhyme. 
It's, it's nonsense. It's, yeah. like, so, but, okay, if right. you haven't seen the film, right, I can't, I can't impress on you enough that it's there's a fight scene yeah. and halfway through it, the fight scene, Alice just goes, wait, I remember this nursery rhyme. Well, she then, does, earlier on, she remembers a bit of it. But not, but then she just goes, uh, 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 yeah, show Freddy his reflection and he will die. Oh, I, I need to make him look in a mirror. And then she does that. Picks up a broken stained glass window from the floor. Yeah. He stares at his own reflection and all the souls escape yeah. from his body, which, okay, but there's never been <laughs> okay. there's never been any implication that that would be a thing yeah. or that that is the res- you know like there's never been an implication that Freddy is weak to mirrors no. or that there's this nursery rhyme that contains the secret for defeating Freddy Krueger or anything like that. So no. it's, it's but like but the if film it, if it had been the you know we, the one we know is. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. Yeah. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, six gra- grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, don't stay up late. Don't stay up late. Or better stay up late. And right. nine, ten, uh, well, I can't remember. Yeah. You take the point. Yeah. Now, never you, sleep again. You remember that? Never sleep again. Right. right. Now, it would be good if, like, we, we praised that when we did the original Nightmare on Elm Street as being like, if there was a serial killer or a murder, it's likely that mm. there will be rhymes about it on the playgrounds. Right? Yeah. People would talk about this villain who was, a, you know, a creepy um, folktale or urban myth kind of Yeah, Because, uh, like, you know, to some extent, the parents would probably want him to sink into sort of the sub- myth. Yeah. Right? Right. But it would make sense in this movie if they were like, oh, wait, it says here 11, 12... Don't let him look at his reflection. Not right? even that. They're fighting in a church. Why doesn't she just go, wait, five, six, grab your crucifix. And she grabs a crucifix and shows it to Freddy. And right. he goes like, ah, and his like, skin starts melting or whatever. Much better. Much better. Yeah. You don't need to go, wait, let me recite this whole Different rhyme. Different rhyme. <laughs> yeah. Which, which, which it isn't very catchy. Right. You can't imagine any children going, you know, as I lay me down to sleep, I pray the l- Lord of Dreams... Yeah. My, <laughs> yeah, like I recited it about two minutes ago. You can't even remember it. It's it's rubbish. Give it to us again, just one more time. Now I lay me down to sleep. The master of dreams, my soul I'll keep. In the reflection of my mind's eye, evil will see itself, and evil will die. Fine, absolutely fine. The mythology itself, for all of it, right? that especially, but other parts of it as well, mm. is so confusing that it's become nonsense. Yeah. It's the same as the, the Jason Voorhees thing of like, oh, it's it was his mother, it was his birthday, but then it was not here, it was him. And yeah. he was a child when it happened, but then in the first film, but then a year later, he's a 28-year-old man. Yeah. But then he's also 17 feet tall. Uh, you, you're like, shut up, right? Yeah. There's a scene in Nightmare on Elm Street where the history teacher is telling him about like ancient dream theories and archetypes. And right. Like, you know, Aristotle thought the the soul was a wandering. Like, yeah, it's amazing how often the uh, lectures that children have in horror movies like reflect- chime so well <laughs> exactly. with what's going on in the film. Uh, but everyone's nodding off in that lesson, and that's how I feel when they're like, you know, probably the dream masters. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. like, come on. It's mm. rubbish. It's so rubbish. Do you think, stuff. just thinking out loud, do you think the scene in Hereditary, you know, the main, yeah, the main yeah, boy in Hereditary, yeah. there's a scene where he's in a lesson. And, did we say right. this at the time? And he starts hitting his head on the desk. Yeah. Is that meant to be a bit like Nightmare on Elm Street? Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. I the, um, the lesson in that reflects what's going on as well, I'm sure, doesn't it? Yeah. Definitely. I remember, I remember talking about it. I am the kid. Was it? Like, <laughs> doing payment? Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. brilliant. Uh, uh, this yeah. is so. This is the fourth of the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street franchise. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of the most highly rated sequels of the Nightmare, of, of the Nightmare on Elm Street sequels. Not of anything. Sorry. Yeah. Um, Friday the Thirteenth Four was highly rated as well. Uh, do you think number four is the sweet spot for um, franchises? You shared this in your notes with me before we started talking, and I've done yeah. a little bit of research to yeah. back it. Uh-huh. Um, have you? No. Okay. Uh, so, I was hoping you would, though. Yeah. Um, so I've looked into the fourth of slasher franchises and to see if it's a trend that it, it, it's it bears consistent. out. Yeah, yeah. Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers. Yeah. Twenty seven percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. Of all the Halloween, this is one re- critic who says 
of all the Halloween sequels, including the irrelevant and unwatchable Halloween 3, yeah. Halloween 4 stands out as the best of a generally uninspired lot. There you go. That could be about a lot of these movies. Yeah. Um, Bride of Chucky. Child's Play 4. Mm-hmm. 46%. One critic says it has a genuinely goofy premise and is far more original than the other sequels. But if you look at it as a horror movie, which it is, that's where the film fails. Oh dear. Again. Like, yeah, better than all the rest of the sequels. Yeah, but also a bad horror movie. Scream 4? Yeah. 59%. Okay. This is another critic says Scream's brand of horror, which lampooned the slasher genre while simultaneously embracing it, was fun and breezy in 1996. In 2011, it's about as fresh as the whiff of something stale and rank from the crypt. Okay, less positive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Texas Chainsaw Massacre 4, which starred Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey. Amazing. Uh, 15%. Okay. And one critic says, who is this movie for? Why make a movie for no one? <laughs> Never before has a movie so vehemently hated the viewer. It's as if it's trying to make fun of you. Great. So brilliant. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four is the is the the main comparison point. Um, I think the which team, one was, we were on a switch on that one. So that was the one where it takes place at, I think it's Higgins Haven, or that might be three. But either way, it's the one where there's it's the, it's the final chapter, the final chapter, yeah, the right. fourth of ten. Yes, yeah. uh, yes, there is. <laughs> Yeah, one of two Friday the 13th films with the word final in its <laughs> title. Uh, it's the one where there's two houses like next door to one another and mm. I think there's teens in one and then there's like a mother and a daughter and a kid and the right. kid is Tommy, Tommy Jarvis. Jarvis. Yeah. Um, and simultaneously there's the brother of the like first victim in the first film who comes back to try and hunt Jason. Right. And um, I think in the video game they conflate those two right in the video game you can you've got the jason become... hunter but he's tommy yeah 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 um yeah so so there's a lot going on it's it's considered one of the better sequels of the it's one of the better friday the 13th sequels yeah um i wonder if that's because it's like the rotten scallop that didn't make you shit as bad as others, <laughs> isn't it? well it seems to me that there's a trend where they go popular horror movie that probably should just be left as one mm. then you have the ill-advised sequel where they don't quite get it right. Yeah. So in Friday the Thirteenth Part Two, there's Jason, but he's wearing a sack. They haven't like got the iconic yeah, yeah. like nature of it yet. Uh, and in Nightmare on Elm Street Two, Freddy's like barely in it, and yeah, he's like yeah. possessing kids and stuff. Then you have Three, which is okay, like it's back on track. Yeah. Right. Which is true of Friday the Thirteenth because it goes back to the the you know. Bunch of the, kids. Is and, it the like a halfway house for for naughty children? Is that the one? No, that's uh, you're thinking of five. Okay, three is is a load of kids in a house like partying. Oh, and that's the one with the mask for the first. That's time. the one with it's, the mask for the yeah, first yeah, time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then four is like where everything comes together. They call it the final something yeah. <laughs> normally, and then uh, after that, it just goes fucking bonkers, mental. Yeah, yeah. So where do you think the franchise is going after this? Um, I mean, obviously we know to some extent, so, because it, you know, becomes increasingly meta. The next film's called The Dream Child. Great. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Was he like going to impregnate someone through his dreams? Or? Uh, I mean, I don't think that's a million miles off from what I understand. Um, so what I want at this point is, and I just mentioned the Friday the 13th video game, right? Yeah. Um, you've played it. I know. If anyone hasn't played it, essentially you can play as either Jason or Camp Counselors. And it's fairly like static what you can do in the game. You play as either a counsellor or Jason and yeah. you have to kill the counsellors or survive against Jason. And there's various ways you can beat Jason. Mm-hmm. Um, there's various ways Jason could kill you. But it's enjoyable because it, every game is somewhat different. Yeah. But it's the same formula every time. Yes. And I, at this point with Nightmare on Elm Street, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with them to just say, new group of kids... Freddy's going to haunt them and they're going to work out a new way of beating him. Mm-hmm. Which is what they did in this one. Like they, they, The fucking reflection is completely made up in the last five seconds of the film. Yeah. So why not do why that not? with the next one? Why not have him, uh, if he hears his own name three times, he catches fire. Like just, why not? Yeah. You don't need to, evidently, you don't need to have like clues for it embedded elsewhere. 
Yeah. So fuck it. Uh, new kids with different problems. Maybe you've got the... We've had the kid in the wheelchair already, um, which is a, seems to be in slasher movies sequels. So they need to have someone in a wheelchair pushed down the stairs or whatever. <laughs> um, so just find different kids with different problems, different anxieties, different yeah. fears. We've already had the kid in the wheelchair in Nightmare on Elm Street as well. That's what I mean, yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. But you could have, you know, the the kid who's scared of swimming has to right. yeah. drown in the bath. Of or course. the kid who's... Uh, what, you mean, mean to cats you so mean you're, not, you're not satisfied with the one who likes karate and the one who has a waterbed well, that's what I mean like, <laughs> that's, that's, that's fine that's, that's fine, fine yeah. Yeah. we don't need to go deeper than that yeah exactly and when you do I think it gets a bit too mean too, too mythology obsessed as well maybe like I think the way to frame what I meant earlier when I said that like, Freddy is cruel and sadistic right but the movie itself doesn't need to be yeah the movie can still have fun with him being cool and sadistic without becoming leering and sadistic and relishing in like the torture points. Yeah, because in the third one, they're essentially victims twice over because yeah. they're um, already suffering from mental health issues. Mental health problems, yeah. 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 So that's what I want next is the same movie over and over again with different, <laughs> different parts once in the every format. 10 weeks yeah yeah where are you uh i think the weirder the better for me like the the weirder more meta more creative stuff like the deja vu scenes or the cinema scenes um that that's the stuff that will keep me interested keep me invested and I think those have been the bits that I've enjoyed the most out of the four films that we've watched so far. You know, the ones mm. where they where, yeah. where they use, um, you dream know, like logic. yeah, like dream mm. logic. They they take advantage of the fact that they're making a horror movie about dreams and the fact that you can sort of get away with a lot of stuff in dreams that you wouldn't in objective reality. Mm. So I, I think all that stuff, if they try and do a bit more with that, that'd be really good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll find out in ten weeks' time with a Nightmare on Elm Street five. The dream child. Fucking hell. Well, with uh, all that said, Joe, how would you survive? So I, I alluded to it earlier um, when we mentioned Kristen's mum. Uh, Kristen, famously, the victim of Freddy Krueger from Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Well, she, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Beats Freddy. Yeah. Um, like, it's pretty, it's, she, she is um, vindicated. I feel at yeah. the end of a nightmare in absolute three. Yeah, exactly. There are, there are multiple witnesses. Yeah. And, uh, and her father, oh no, Nancy's father, isn't it? Is the one who like sacrifices himself. Yeah. There's adult witnesses. There's the, I think it's fairly well established to those in the know that Freddie came back, haunted the children whose, um, children of the people who killed him. Yeah. And has been killed. It's, it's, um, it's past the point of coincidence by that point, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the child of every, like every child of all of the people who burnt Freddy to death, yeah, have died, with the exception of Kristen at this point. Yeah, and every single one of them before dying has spoken of dreams of Freddy. Yeah, and and Kristen's mother is like, you need a good night's sleep. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, no, I, you know that thing we, you know that thing that happened last year, the thing that's been killing all these kids for like eight years now. Um, well, it's happening again. I'm worried it's happening again. And she says, well, you know that glass of water you're drinking? I've packed it with sleeping pills. <laughs> I, I'm desperate for you to be asleep, yeah. please. The thing you need is to get your head down. Yeah. Uh, yes. I mean, if I was going to be mealy-mouthed, I'd say that uh, Kristen's mother does survive the film. Yeah, <laughs> Kristen doesn't, though. Kristen very so the advice is not. for, like, if you want your child to survive the film. Yes. Uh, don't drug them. Yeah. Yeah. I had the same thing down. Um, cause I think it's a very good piece of advice and it very obviously results in the death of the main character of the film. Yeah. Um, equally I'd say, Kristen, if you want to prove stuff to your mum, drag her into your dream. Yeah. Show her. This is Freddy Krueger. Remember? Yeah. Uh, your mum might end up dying, but. Yeah. It's a risk worth taking. It might be a risk you, you should be willing to take. Yeah. <laughs> I have that shot where like. Is it Kristen's mum or um, someone's mum? I think it's Kristen's. Like they're at the Freddy house or the Nancy house, I should say. Mm. And she just like pulls up in her car. It's like, hey, get away from that house. 
and they all yeah. like walk to their cars and then she just like speeds off in the back of the shop yeah. it's like what the fuck was that about it's just she's like, just patrolling <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah it doesn't it doesn't make any sense mm-hmm. um yeah my i i would say um it's again something that we alluded to earlier uh read the signs right so mm-hmm. if you're kincaid if you're joey and uh Kristen, <laughs> the yeah. like dream magician uh dream witch or whatever uh, drags you into her dream which her dream is taking place in the room where you know all of your friends died yeah freddy krueger's domain and she's like guys i think freddy krueger's back and you go nah, nah I, I don't reckon this is fine very slightly different so i don't think so yeah uh that is that is poor form from them, I would say. <laughs> yeah. um, they they should heed her advice yeah. a little bit well, more. I mean, well, if you ignore her, there's a chance she's right. Mm. If you embrace her and say, you know, let's, let's humor you, let's see this through, mm-hmm. uh, you might end up wasting a bit of time, but securing her own safety. Yeah. It's or, surely surely better better to be, you know, on, well, on the safe it, side. It would seem so. Because yeah. Five minutes later, he's dreaming about his dog pissing on the um, pissing yeah, fire, pissing so, fire on Freddy's grave, which, we, which, as we all know, <laughs> is well documented in the franchise history that that is the uh, that is yeah. the most efficient you, way. You know the rhyme. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. So maybe, maybe you know, it's. I guess it's. It boils down to like I. I feel after all these podcasts, eventually we'll be able to just boil every survival idea down to like. You know how like they say there's only seven plots in Hollywood, right? Yeah, like there are only seven survival ideas, but they all like they they all are broad themes, right? And right. this one is listen to the experts. This is expert, right? right yeah, don't like, drag your daughter. Yeah, Chris, mm. Kristen is an expert in dealing with Freddy Krueger. She is a world renowned expert, surely. Like she is the person in the world who is most, most equipped. Before to that, deal it was Freddy Nancy. Krueger. Now it's her. And Nancy died. Yeah, yeah. So, if you were going to believe anyone, it should be her. Listen to the expert. Man. Yeah. Uh, and they don't, and they die. Yeah. It's a shame. Is it? How about you? Are, Are you, you missing Kincaid? Yeah, he's, he was all right. Was he? Yeah, he's fine. Absolutely fine. Have you got any any more ideas? Um, yeah. You recall that um, dear Daniel, is his name? Dan? Yeah. He's been injured in the car crash he has and his chest's been punctured yeah it's like some sort of you know typical um car crash injury isn't it you is know. it though because his chest's bleeding right i don't know well that's that's the injury because i know this because they are doing surgery on him and he's like, no don't drug me don't, yeah i'll take the surgery awake and they're like no no <laughs> We'll gas you. Yeah. They gas him and he goes under. And they start performing surgery. And then what happens next? Um I'll remind you. Yeah. Kristen uh, Kristen has to rescue him. Basically. Well Chris he and Kristen are in the dream world together and they're yeah. they're sort of trying to survive. And he begins to fade. And it's not because he's dying, it's because in the real world the doctors say he's hemorrhaging. Bring him out of it. Mm. Now <laughs> if you're performing surgery yeah on someone yeah and they just start bleeding yeah. profusely from yeah. the wound he's not bleeding because he's asleep no exactly yeah <laughs> don't like grab the anesthetist and say like oh this this anesthesiologist you know what i mean an anesthesiologist yeah, yeah you know what i mean the, the, yeah. the anesthetic person yeah don't grab them and be like wake him up yeah he needs to see this <laughs> yeah. yeah we need to ask him why he's bleeding so much <laughs> yeah bring him out of it mate yeah don't bring him out of it yeah keep but him under how would that possibly help it would not we, you, what, what we need like, is to flailing around what it, what, it, what it's like is they're going bring him out of it and like we'll we'll send him back to the ward as quickly as possible <laughs> yeah. like, it's like when you're a kid and you're like playing in your parents living room and you knock over a vase so you just like run out of the room yeah, right. because it's like well if if I'm not caught in the living yeah, room right. yeah, yeah. like if we just close him up I'm sure it'll be fine <laughs> Mate, he's hemorrhaging. Bring him out of it. I think that's like the, my favourite moment in like Hollywood <laughs> surgery that I've seen. Yeah, Fuck it's good. It's he's good. hemorrhaging. I mean, bring my survival tip is don't bring him out of it. So it's advice to the surgeons. Yeah, yeah. Like if you're a, if you're a surgeon, 
survival surely is high on your priority list for, yeah. for your patient. Ordinarily, I would I would err on the side of the filmmakers and suggest that they've probably researched these things. I'm not going to do this in this occasion. <laughs> yeah. like, what is the benefit to him being awake? There's he's, absolutely no. He's, he's absolutely undergoing not. what appears to be open heart surgery. Yeah. And is bleeding. Yeah. Bad and they're like, hemorrhaging. What he needs now is to be awake. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll talk him through it. Yeah. Well, have you got any more suggestions? Yeah. yeah. Well, as you know, Chris, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm a, a bit of an expert when it comes to martial arts. Of course. So yeah. when I saw, what's his name? Rick. Rick. So when I saw Rick uh, put on his <laughs> headband. Yeah. And he's in his, he's in his garage, if you recall, mm-hmm. um, just doing some practice karate with the punch bag. Uh, and I was thinking, there's there's a kindred spirit. Yeah, there's a guy who knows his stuff. Yeah, I was like, that guy knows his way around a karate place where that happens, right? Yeah. That's what I was thinking to myself. Now, my advice to him and subsequently to Alice, who he teaches his best moves to, yeah. so she can use them against Freddy in the final fight, if mm-hmm. you recall, um, don't use the flying kick or the jumping kick. Yeah. Right? It looks good. Very ineffective. Mm-hmm. Very ineffective. Yeah, because it's only it's only going to be effective. Well, surely it's it's quite effective if you can make contact. You know, you know, make perfect contact with it, but you're you're leaving yourself quite open if it goes wrong. Well, yeah, you you're you've got balance. a low percentage chance of success. Like if you're in the air, I can just take you down quite easily. Yeah. If you've got a good you know footing, yeah, it's hard for me to take you down. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, perhaps it's because she needs to jump in the air to kick Freddie in the head. Mm-hmm. I'd say keep your grounding. Yeah, uh, she can obviously kick his head height anyway. Yeah. So there's there's, there's a uh, you know there's a reason in the raid that um, no one's doing flying kicks. No one's doing flying kicks. What they are doing is like punching you seventeen times in yeah. the space of time it would take to do a flying. They're kick. doing takedowns and they're doing head punches or head kicks. Yeah. They're not doing flying kicks. Yeah. They look cool. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what about in the Karate Kid, where he does a flying kick and wins the entire tournament? Mm-hmm. I'll remind you, he does that because he's got an injured leg. Right. He can't put his other leg down and has uh-huh. to fight on with an injured leg because the guy he's fighting cheated and hurt him. Yeah. Right? What I was actually thinking of was they do it a lot in The Matrix. Right. Where gravity is not an issue. <laughs> yeah. But they are in the dream world. That's true. Uh, we don't know how much... Gravity, you know, what percentage uh, of gravity is is, you know, true to life yeah. in the dream world? I don't, I don't practice karate. Perhaps in karate, it's considered. It's like day one. Yeah, everyone day has to one get... always to use flying kick. I did look this up to make sure I wasn't mistaken, <laughs> right. and it's generally considered like a good show of like your flexibility or like a good exhibition. Thing. Yeah, in the same way as like smashing a plank of wood with the back of your hand, right? Yeah. You can do that. Without being an expert in karate, you just learn the technique. Right? Yeah, it just looks cool. Mm-hmm. Same as like flying kicks, I think. Yeah, it makes sense. Cinematic, but not functional. Yes, not unlike a Nightmare on Elm Street Four, <laughs> <laughs> the Dream Master. Yeah. Thank you very much for listening. That was episode one hundred and ninety of a How to Survive podcast. Next week, Joe, going over to France, aren't we? It's uh, the most tasteful way that we could think of of uh, commemorating the terrible events in the Notre Dame. Yeah. Um, is it? Yeah. Uh, which is, we had that talk, which is, which is <laughs> celebrating, um, celebrating Paris's uh, history mm. uh, with the 2014 horror movie as above, so below. Oft requested by listeners to the show. Yeah. Um, most recently, I think by Elise, um, okay. Thank you. He requested a number of films, but this is the one that we've picked to cover. Um, it's available on Netflix in the UK, so uh, make sure you give it a watch ahead of next week. Uh, and we'll all delve down into the Paris catacombs mm. together. We haven't gone underground since. Well, it must be since. Um, since the descent? Yeah, I think that. Yeah. I mean, will it be another descent or will it be. Not very good. You can get in touch. Uh, how to survive show at gmail.com is the email address, or you can tweet at how to survive pod. Yeah. And that's exactly what uh, one person's done. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a, it's a bizarre name. Okay. Um, 
Cubay WL2. Okay. Smiley face. Good. It's a Twitter screen name. Sure. Uh, you know, I often ask for you know, suggestions on how to pronounce mm-hmm. names. N- not forthcoming in this instance. Quebec WL2 smiley face. Okay. Sent us a direct message, a DM. Mm-hmm. They slid into the DMs yeah. and said, listen to you guys every day at work. What do you do for a job? Where well, that's appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anesthetist. Yeah. My name's Mark Kermode and I need inspiration. Yeah. Um, my friend actually recommended you guys and I haven't stopped. Well, thank you very much to Cubay WL2 Smiley Faces friend. Let me know the next movie you guys are working on so I can maybe give my input. Well, the next movie we're working on is As Above, So Below. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to be put on the show. Congratulations, you have been. Also, try Bedeviled. It's a horrible horror movie, but if I had to sit through it, I feel like the best movie review podcasters do also. Thanks for your time, guys. I mean, we get a lot of emails where the um, the thread of it is essentially, guys, this is shit. there's a terrible film. Please yeah. watch it. Yeah. Now, that's not <laughs> the best way to convince us. Yeah. But thank you, Quebec, for your email, and we'll put Bedeviled on the list. I'm not going to tell you where on the list it is. <laughs> Have you heard of Bedeviled? No. Yeah. Which is not a good sign. Yeah. Is it like when you put jewels on something? You bedevil it? Uh, no. It's Bejazzle. Bejazzle. Bedazzle? The only Nightmare of Nightmare on Elm Street 4, the Dream Master podcast, deep dive, that could possibly end up with vajazzling being a discussion topic. There you are. Thank mm. you very much. Don't forget to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts as it really helps us find a wider audience. Five stars is the language of love. And uh, if you do leave us a five-star review, then we'll read it out on the podcast, which mm. um, is a shortcut to... Uh, drive yourself to the top of our email inbox so thank you very much for listening and until next time rest in hell that's what she says me yeah that's that well-known phrase Sounds good. rest in hell yeah well because they probably couldn't afford the copyright for rest in peace yeah, yeah. rest in pieces yeah maybe you could go with that i'd be like well he's in pieces that makes sense yeah rest in peace mm. you could say that mm. i do accept it it's not particularly badass yeah but i understand it Rest in hell. You know, this is, there's a little experiment you can do where you type in series of words into Google and it could be like a sentence that you've made up and you can do it in quotes. Yeah. And like most of them are original sentences. So it'd be like the cat sat on the uh, bait bins. Like no one's ever said that before. Right. I'm really quirky. I made that myself, right? And you can do that and you can just test out like, oh. Like Google whacking. Google whacking, right? The, the English language is so bizarre and mm. so diverse and so... Um, rich in its options of what you can say that you can beat Google by coming up with a five word phrase that's never been said before and there's, there's many ways you can do that yeah. and I think rest in hell would satisfy that because it's so <laughs> weird it is weird is it as weird as in the reflection of my mind's eye evil will see itself and evil will die they're cut from the same cloth aren't they they are Yeah, cut from the same shit rag that, <laughs> that Rennie Harlan wiped his ass with lovely and on that particularly pleasant note thank you and goodbye sleep well <laughs>